Hi guys, and welcome to the Dave Network. I'm Chris White, and we're here in the lovely Middle Park Hotel. And we're joined today by Lubo Milicevic. Currently you're playing for South Melbourne. How have you found the transition from the A-League to the VPL? Um, I, I suppose interesting. It's definitely uh, different in the way the football's played. I suppose any league or any country, it's always going to be different. Uh, at times it's been quite rough, but uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed it and been part of a, a great club with so much tradition. Do you find there's a lot of difference playing for a community-based club, especially one with so much history like South Melbourne, as opposed to a more franchise-based club that's out to make money? Uh, I guess that's a broad question. I, the most obvious thing is that it being a community-based club, you have got more contact with the people directly. I suppose I feel like I know a lot more people who have a genuine interest in the game rather than a franchise. But in saying that, you know, Newcastle was a little bit different to Victory because Newcastle was a community-based team as well. Um, with the Melbourne Victory, I guess it was more a business or a franchise. And who would be the players from the South, you would say, to look out for in the future? Uh, I think Jesse Kuncevic is a very good player. Carl uh, Reckia, Stephen Topalovic. I mean, it's unfair to name one player or another, you know, Danny Vasilevsky's played at A-League level and a lot of the young boys like uh, Jake and Nicky Jacobs, they've all got a little, you know, they've all got that ability to probably step up, I mean, it'd be unfair for me to single out one and not mention the rest, I think they've got a good squad and I think there's a lot of players there with, have got more potential. Those that have played under Eddie Krenchevic have rated him as one of the best coaches that they've played under, how would you personally rate him as a coach? find him to be great. Uh, it's been, I guess, a breath of fresh air for me just to be a coach by someone who's played at the very top. You know, we all forget or a lot of us wouldn't know that he's actually played in, you know, European Champions League semi-finals and he played with and against the greats of the game. Uh, for me personally, I wouldn't be at South if it wasn't for Eddie. Uh, he's the reason why I'm there and I'm lucky enough that through Eddie I've also got to meet uh, people like Ange Dallas and Tom Callis and, and Leo, the president, who have got you know South in their heart and, and are genuine football lovers. They want the the game to be, I guess, the the winner. They don't have a personal interest as such a money making schemes and so forth. So, you know, I'm very lucky. As a player who's played in both the NSL and the A League, what is your opinion on how the game has progressed? I guess the difference is there's no ethnic-based teams now, so no longer is the media reporting on ethnic violence. Um, they'll still report on negative aspects of our game whenever they can, um, because they all have agendas. As far as the game goes, I don't think it's as technical. I think a lot of players don't have the direct pathway anymore because basically the A-League teams came in and they haven't really connected with the community as much as they should have. No one's aligned with any clubs that have got a junior base set up and it's taken six years for them to realise that that was a, a mistake and I think if they had the right people involved from the start, it shouldn't have been neglected the way it has. So do you believe we'll notice a real gap with the current Socceroos that will be coming through over the next, say, five to ten years? It's hard for me to completely predict, but I don't think we're producing the same talent, no. Uh, if I look through the A-League, I don't think the quality is as high as it once was, uh, as, you know, as the NSL was, uh, in producing players. And if I look at the players overseas, I don't think there's that many players uh, playing. Now, it's not easy. Oh, I don't think it's easy for anyone to go overseas and break into a first 11. But I just don't think all the players are getting the right opportunities anymore in Australia. Basically, you get tired of things, uh, I guess, rumour and innuendo surrounding yourself. And uh, throughout my victory time where I was put on a media ban, a lot of things were said and a lot of untruths were basically spread. And that was, from there on in, that was gospel. And since my time there, I said, never again will I let people spread rumours about myself and then 
purport it to be the truth. But at the same time, I I really don't take it all that seriously. I I've been known to stir the pot. My mates know that I'm cheeky. I um I laugh at all of it. I really do. But you know, it can be blown out of proportion or not. And I guess these days with the web, uh, uh, it's much more powerful than I guess a media forum rather than TV. Do you also think this is a, an approach that play, more players should be taking, voicing their opinions? Um, I guess it's each to their own, but to be honest, I don't watch TV anymore, and I definitely don't watch athletes when they do interviews, and especially not in Australia, because I find them really boring. Overseas, they have, I guess, the integrity or the courage to speak their minds, but they definitely don't hear. It's been, they've been sanitised too much. And now interviews are sort of saturated with their PR machine, and I find them really boring. And I'm and I'm sure most viewers do too. And lastly, we know you're currently contracted to South Melbourne, and personally, I'd prefer you to stay to after the finals. But however, what is your plans for the future? Uh, I'm still looking to go overseas, whether that be Europe or Asia. Uh, in the coming months, it'll become reality, I suppose. Either or. Uh, but in saying that, life is unpredictable and so is the football world, so you just never know. Thank you very much, Lubo, for joining us on the Dave Network. Thanks for having me. Wish you all the best.